Hey there, welcome back. I should start this video by warning you that this is a sequel. It's part two of how to motorize and automate your existing blinds. In part one, I went through how to add a motor and Wi-Fi control to your existing blinds. Part two, this video, I made some improvements to the original design. I'm not gonna repeat all the steps that I covered in part one, but if you haven't seen part one, then watching part two isn't gonna make as much sense to you. So I'll give you a minute right now to pause this video and go watch part one. Then come back and we'll get on with the new stuff. Go ahead, I'll just wait here. I failed at this many times. Fortunately, I tried one more time after all my failures and ended up with a success. Let's go through all the changes that I made in version two of the blinds. One change I made, which I don't actually think is necessary, was I replaced this thick cord that it comes with in the blinds with some braided fishing line. I thought on my blinds that this cord making turns and rubbing against things was making those noises. Uh, it was not. What was making those noises was my spool here was too close and was rubbing on the metal. That's what was making the squeaking noise. So this is probably not necessary and in fact I think by introducing this thin wire I made a new problem and that is raising the blinds is actually slower than it was. Uh, for two things. One, because the cord is so much smaller, this cord would wrap up and eventually it would wrap on top of itself. The radius of the spool got bigger as this cable wrapped around it, and bigger spool means faster lifting. So by putting this fishing line on here, I actually slowed it down. That was not intended, of course, and that's why I would not recommend doing this necessarily. Another thing I did, which you can't really appreciate here, but I'll show you a picture, was I made the spool smaller because that would require less torque, which is good. Smaller radius, significantly less torque. But what that did was also contribute to slowing down the lifting and lowering of the blinds. So I went from two and a half minutes to lift the blinds to just over three minutes to lift the blind. Shrinking the shaft of the spool was a good idea, it was a good plan. I think though shrinking the shaft and using this fishing line was a bad idea. So I think I would still use the smaller shaft of the spool, but not use the fishing line. That would be my recommendation after attempting that. The other important change here with, the, with regards to this string was these bumpers. So these bumpers help to give the string a clear path where it's not snaking between other components and rubbing up against things. By putting these bumpers here, it lifts the string above everything else. There's still plenty of room below the window frame, but it keeps it from interfering with anything else that's in this channel. That was really good. Another thing that I added was this pulley down here. This was designed by Paul and it was fantastic. It makes a lot nicer path for the string than the initial pulley that I was using, which was the pulley that it came with for the tilt mechanism. So replacing that tilt mechanism pulley with a designed pulley that was intended just for this purpose was also a very good idea. Okay, moving on. The servo was another big issue. And what was wrong with the servo was it was chirping. It was making that sound, right? So I tried using one of these, which was supposed to silence the servo, and it didn't work perfectly. Initially, the power to my servo was seven volts, and this was still chirping quite a bit, even with this filter in here. The servo was still making quite a bit of noise, a lot of adjustments. When I decreased the voltage that was powering my servo to five volts, I got a lot less chirping, a lot less chirping, almost a tolerable amount of chirping, but still some. So I didn't give up searching for a better solution. This is good, but I think I found the better solution. The better solution is, I have routed the positive input line from the buck converter to one of the motor outputs on this motor controller. And then I connected the control pins to two new pins on the D1 Mini so that when I flip the cover tilt switch to tilt open or to tilt closed, 
it activates this motor output. And that sends the 12 volts to the buck converter, which then changes that 12 volts down to, in this case, it's still five or it could be seven. The trick is in the automation, when I push the arrows to open or close the tilting, the D1 mini sends the correct signal to the control pins on the motor controller so that 12 volts starts to flow into the buck converter that sends power to the servo. Then there is like a half a second delay. After that half second delay, the servo control pin sends the signal to the servo to move. So I first power the servo, wait half a second, then let the command go to tilt the servo. That gives the servo enough time to get power, then it gets the signal and it opens or closes. Then it waits five seconds and then it powers down the buck converter. That's beautiful. And I adjusted the controls for my one button, which I found to be quite useful, even though initially I didn't think I would use it, but I put a button with some long wires down under my desk. It makes it very convenient for just pushing the button to open and close the blinds. When I long press the button, the blinds will lift or lower just as they did before. So that's pretty easy in my head. I just kind of push it down, count to one, let go. It seems to work. Then I also made it so that this button, when I quickly double press it, that will give the signal to open or close the tilting. And I used the same kind of logic in that whichever state was last recorded, whether it was open or closed, the blinds will move in the other direction. Now, let's try and give you a demo. You'll notice here that this blue light is not on. For demo purposes here, I'm gonna disconnect these. When I double click this, you will not be able to miss the blue light come on. Now it will send the signal, turn the servo, and then in a couple seconds it goes back off. Beautiful. That essentially does what this intended to do. This intended to monitor the signal line and when there was no signal for the servo to make an adjustment, it would then switch off the power to the servo. That's what I've done. I've set it so that the power to the servo only comes on when I tell the servo to move, either this way or through an automation or through pressing the icon in Home Assistant. After the servo has received the signal and moved, the power then is disconnected from the servo. There is absolutely no way that this servo is ever going to chirp again. That's a victory. So now let me get it reconnected and we will give you a demo. Long press. Lowers, stops, raises. This is the 24. This motor's not strong enough. <laughs> now the tilt, watch my fingers. There you go, and it's closed tight. And then as soon as that blue light goes off, no more blue light, no more movie servo. Now we'll turn it back on. We'll t tilt it this way so you can see the light. Victory! And that is version two of the blinds. Am I gonna do a version three? Maybe, but not right away. If I do a version three, the two things that I will do different are I will add a light sensor so that the blinds can respond automatically based on how much light is being picked up on the outside. So I'll point the light sensor at the window and when it's really bright, I'll close the blinds. When it's significantly less bright, then I'll open the blinds. The other thing I want to do is I still want to figure out how to use a stepper as the tilt mechanism. I'm actually very happy with the servo, so that's why I'm not sure I'm going to do a version 3. I really don't have a reason to change this now. I think it works pretty well. I could not have done all this engineering by myself, so thanks to everybody who gave me ideas and helped me figure stuff out along the way. If you like this video and you want to see more, I've got a bunch and I'm making new ones as often as I can. In addition to videos like this, I do live streams at least once a week on Sunday and sometimes during the week whenever I can squeeze it in. If you want to chat with me or with others who also enjoy these kinds of projects, check us out on Facebook and Discord. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios.